Sir, Polkadot is quickly becoming the deployment destination for game developers from indie to the largest in the world. We got a big show for you today, so we'll jump right into the juice with Peenin. This week's gaming update has A Star's Yoki, suddenly playable in this game by A Star Games Incorporated. <laughs> while Haha ha has a play to burn jetpack game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Everloot recaps their 5-day Alpha Expeditions game with high retention and over 1400 expeditions run, each with an average play time of 8 minutes. In focus is Modular Capital's investment thesis on mythical games, FDV a fraction against any other infrastructure contenders, but mythical with more annualized NFT sales than any other. Modular points out that John Linden's extensive experience experience as studio head at Activision, who oversaw Call of Duty and having founded another game studio, which later sold, and including Mythical's already impressive adoption track record, not to mention being the first and only in-app Google and Apple-approved NFT marketplace, is bullish indeed for Mythical, and good for Polkadot in result. This extensive experience is crucial, as AAA studios spend 50 to 250 million for 3 to 5 years per game, targeting 3 billion players. And yet, sometimes they still fail. So when mythical on Polkadot, as soon as Snowbridge, back to you, Jay. Damn it. NFTs as game assets are an exciting way to build gamer loyalty and stickiness. And one Polkadot secured project is looking to solve minting fee woes on Ethereum, but is the Laos token economy sustainable? Crane gives his opening impressions in another edition of Tokenomic Crackdown. Laos aims to slash blockchain transaction costs. Will this revolutionize digital asset management? This is Tokenomic Crackdown. Laos aims to revolutionize blockchain transactions by establishing a decentralized consensus system that significantly reduces transaction costs on major networks like Ethereum and Polygon. We're offering a solution that transitions from scarcity to a usage-driven asset value model, Laos positions itself as a pioneer in digital ownership. The Laos token is essential for transactions, staking, and governance, with a distinctive role in facilitating low-cost asset minting. However, the utility of Laos in capturing value is under scrutiny, especially when the platform's goal is to minimize costs. Transaction fees, often a revenue generator, might not suffice if Laos maintains a low-cost promise. Staking and governance, while standard features, require exceptional execution to drive significant value. Token allocation raises concerns also. A steep 20% is reserved for the core team with a one-year cliff and three-year vesting, and 20% goes to investors with a one-year cliff and two-year vesting. A combined 23% is earmarked for the community treasury and foundation, with the largest slice, 35%, allocated to vaguely defined community incentives. These decisions, part particularly the large allocations and the blending of community treasury with the foundation are an odd choice. The governance model of Laos is notably sparse in details, which does not instill confidence, especially considering governance is intended to be cornerstone utility of the token. The lack of a robust, transparent governance framework could hinder effective community involvement in decision making. In summary, while Laos introduces an innovative approach to enhancing blockchain efficiency and managing digital assets, it faces significant challenges concerning token economics and governance structures. These issues, coupled with concerns concerns over token utility and distribution fairness lead to a cautious sustainability rating of 5 out of 10. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, sir. And while I get ready for today's absolutely massive attempts at governance, Indico's got some active refs you want to pay attention to. After being sidelined twice from the confirmation period, the Inter-Miami partnership enters its crucial third and final confirmation round. Requiring but a simple majority to seal the deal, the pink squadron appears to be now dribbling towards victory. Giotto's proposal for reduced inflation is garnering more and more supports with votes nearing the 50% mark. But with decentralized voices yet to join the fray, the outcome remains uncertain. New on the chopping block is a referendum posted by Max from Harbor Industrial Capital, a private and exclusive Polkadot VC fund with currently over 10 million USD of asset under management spanning across over 20 parachains. Their vision is to raise a second Polkadot ecosystem fund with a target size of 100 million USD using a marketing budget of 1 million USD. Currently largely supported by various builders and agents of the ecosystem, the HIC also presents the compelling argument that unlike the treasury which recycles existing funds, VCs inject fresh capital into the system. 
talking of injections, Passcoin, also a vault operator, is requesting on behalf of the interlay team 202k dot to incentivize a fresh infusion of 45 IBTC into the Polkadot ecosystem. The justification for this incentivization program lies in the current minting and redemption fees, which positions IBTC as a common good within the Polkadot ecosystem widely used by DEXs. And while many agree that the proposed solution does not ensure long-term sustainability, they also recognize it as the best option available at present. Back to you, Jay. Thanks, Indy. World's biggest DAO keeps on rolling. It will be live on X and YouTube in 25 minutes. And then see you again tomorrow for a colossal news dump. Have a great day, everybody.